I promise the good people of Gotham that I will work tirelessly to get Arkham Asylum reopened so we can all sleep a little easier. There you have it. Quincy Sharp placing the blame for tonight's events not on the Batman, but on Blackgate Prison and pledging to return Arkham Asylum to full operation. The Batman Arkham series has now been officially institutionalized. After moving from the asylum to the big city, developer Rocksteady has handed off their hero to WB Montreal to ensure Batman's most successful video game franchise continues on schedule. Riddle us this, with a new team and a new cast, can a prequel possibly be as pleasantly provocative as its predecessors? Well, well, if it isn't the King Thug himself, figured it was only a matter of time before you showed up. What is that? Behind you! Oh, come on. Expect me to fall for that? I mean, try something originally. <laughs> Arkham Origins takes place at the beginning of the Dark Knight's career, around two years after Bruce Wayne first put on the cape and cowl. But any Gothamites that work the night shift in Arkham City will feel right at home. In fact, Origins on the whole is a bit too much, like the 2011 game, with virtually no citizens roaming the streets and no moving vehicles. The excuse here is that everyone is staying in on Christmas Eve, honoring a citywide curfew. The decorations are nice, but with alleys and rooftops only patrolled by thugs, Gotham isn't exactly bursting with holiday spirit. It's essentially just a few new props on the stage. Fortunately, new districts add several iconic locations like Dixon Docks, Blackgate Penitentiary, and the Gotham City Police Department that expand the world in a meaningful way. After the game's opening, you gain access to the original Batcave, making its first appearance in an Arkham game, which Batman can revisit to complete training exercises, change outfits, and ask Alfred for advice. We have a tendency to fear, often outright despise, that which is different. Oh, but you already knew that. You can fast travel to various Batwing drop points once Batman bypasses the Riddler security systems at several comms towers around town, which speeds up the game considerably. <laughs> well, you just couldn't wait till New Year's, huh? Well, guess the fireworks are going off early. <laughs> The story, despite covering an origin that's been retold numerous times, manages to pull off some fun surprises and adds a few clever twists to the Dark Knight's mythology. On Christmas Eve, the villain Black Mask, aka Roman Sionis, places a $50 million bounty on the bat, and eight of the world's greatest assassins rise to the challenge. Your next fight is usually decided for you, but the game paces them out well, and a few bosses return multiple times with escalating difficulty. The first few hours are particularly satisfying as the game throws a veritable parade of different characters at you. Like Arkham City, Origins provides an open world with interiors that load separately, and there are plenty of side activities to investigate across the snowy skyline. The most enjoyable of these activities are the new crime scenes, which involve using detective mode to reassemble the events that led to someone's death. It's like replaying an episode of CSI from any angle, and rewinding and fast-forwarding to find clues is consistently interesting and fun. There are simpler diversions, like disabling the Penguin's arm caches, beating up Riddler data handlers to recover their hidden data packs, hunting down bombs left by Anarchy, blowing up Black Mask drug shipments, and following a bread trail left by Bane's partner, Bird. Other guest stars, like Shiva, Deadshot, and the Mad Hatter, can also be dealt with if you feel like taking a break from the story missions, and their side quests are a bit more satisfying. GCPD Dispatch will occasionally alert you to crimes in progress that occur in specific locations, but these are only interesting if you're looking for more fodder to convert into experience points. A few have clever setups, but they're usually just a group of gangsters to slap around. The rhythmic, fluid fighting the series is known for hasn't changed much, but the opposition has stepped up their game a bit. Bane has now deployed tougher Venom soldiers, and new martial artists will try to wreck the flow you need to build up to maximize the experience gained from each fight. Policemen patrolling the main part of the city don't add much, since they'll either jump down your throat or ignore you, but having a few new faces to punch is nice. New gadgets are usually employed for solving puzzles or stealthily picking off targets, but some of them can be quite useful in a fight. The remote claw amusingly ties two targets together, whether it's a gas can and a thug, or a thug and another thug. Shock gloves can electrify your attacks when charged up, which can unexpectedly turn some boss battles into a breeze. You'll appreciate the extra options. 
Some of these toys are tied to the story, but there are also two upgrade trees that Batman can work through as he levels up, Close Combat and Invisible Predator, so you can improve each skill set separately. With 48 challenge maps available, crimes in progress pinging every couple of minutes, and packs of goons standing on every other street corner, there are multiple opportunities to grind for XP. The game also has Dark Knight challenges, which award you with bonus experience when you finish specific in-game achievements. When it comes to competition, there's perhaps no greater challenge than Invisible Predator Online, the first multiplayer mode added to the Arkham series. The game type has two teams of up to three machine gun wielding henchmen battling for control points while Batman and Robin stalk them from above and below. Both teams, working for either the Joker or Bane, start with 25 reinforcements, which tick down as they die or lose control points. When one team runs out of reinforcements, the other team wins. During a round, each soldier has a chance to open a door and seize control of their fearless leader to do some damage with their enhanced abilities. The dynamic duo achieves victory by filling up an intimidation meter, which drops sharply whenever either hero falls. At the beginning of each round, anyone that played as a generic goon the previous round can opt into a random drawing to fill the boots of Batman or Robin. To give a rough idea of how often you'll be able to don a cape, we got to play Batman and Robin one time each over the course of 12 matches. This fairly unique multiplayer mode is fun, and it feels like the perfect fit for the series. An otherwise standard 3v3 setup feels rather tense knowing that you're being hunted from all angles, making you hyper-conscious of where your teammates are at all times. Swooping down upon an unsuspecting player as Batman or Robin is a genuine rush, and turning the tables on the vigilantes can also be intensely gratifying. We've got the advantage, boys! Now keep it! The two teams and four maps don't offer a lot of variation, but hopefully this promising mode will be improved with more arenas and supervillain squads via future DLC. You've lost Batman. Might as well head home and get some rest. I've got a feeling tomorrow's going to be a very busy day for you. Anyone nervous that Origins would not be handled with the same loving care Rocksteady gave to Arkham Asylum and City can rest easy knowing that WB Montreal has done right by the Caped Crusader. Origins makes daring but believable choices with its characters, and succeeds at the tough task of maintaining story tension in a prequel. What's more, the voice actors for Batman and Joker completely own their roles with incredible performances, despite concerns over the cast of the animated series retiring. We're gonna great deal on an out-of-service amusement park. Oh, you should have seen the look on the real estate agent's face when we shook hands on the deal. <laughs> Arkham Origins doesn't have the wow factor of Arkham City, but more of the same isn't at all a bad thing for Bat fans. As an open world game, it suffers by having no moving vehicles and only sticking to one time of day and weather pattern, and the single player campaign features puzzles and boss fights that, while entertaining, remind us a lot of past encounters, sometimes with the same villains. But the quality of the combat, the diversity of the dialogue from lead characters to two-bit crooks, and the sheer amount of things to do make this stretch of Gotham an enjoyable place to visit. Origins proves the Arkham formula is strong enough for another team to tamper with, but if the series wants to really break free of its restraints in the next generation, they're going to have to teach this old bat even more new tricks.